turn now to the presidential candidate who's been on just about every point of the political spectrum. A young Democrat in college, Bob Barr became a Republican after reading Ayn Rand. He was made a prosecutor by Ronald Reagan and came to Congress with Newt Gingrich in 1994. There he led the fight to impeach Bill Clinton and oppose gay marriage. But after the Libertarian Party helped defeat Barr, they called him the worst drug warrior in Congress, Barr switched sides. Today he's a life member of the Libertarian Party and that party's candidate for president, taking direct aim at what he calls the nanny state. You stab it, you shoot it, you cut off its head, you put a stake through its heart, you burn it, and you scatter the ashes to the four corners of the earth. Well, that is vivid. Mr. Barr, welcome. George, good to be with you. So, so what is the nanny state and how do you kill it? Well, the nanny state is right up there behind you. It's Capitol Hill, it's the, it's the White House, it's all these federal buildings around here that are adding trillions of dollars over the years uh, to the cost of doing business, the cost of educating children, the cost of traveling in this country. It is a federal government that has become so big that it has stifled individual liberty and freedom in this country and Americans realize that I was just yesterday down at a at a NASCAR event in Daytona and that's one of the things that I heard uh, from uh, you know the Americans that were out there enjoying the more the uh, uh, Independence Day weekend uh, there's just too much government it's not just taxes it goes way beyond that it's stifling our country of course you served several terms under that Capitol Dome uh, in the Congress and, and when you were in the Congress you seemed to have a quite different agenda and record from what the Libertarian Party stands for right now. You were for very tough drug laws. You were for the Defense of Marriage Act. You voted for the war uh, in Iraq. You voted for the Patriot Act. And I guess my question to you is, uh, what was the moment of epiphany and did you have a tough time convincing Libertarians that this was a true conversion? Uh, the, the, the real epiphany, uh, and, and that's really a very good word because it's the cumulative effect of looking back at, at the growth of government and the way particularly under this administration, George, individual liberty is being, is being taken away from us. Uh, Senator Lieberman just mentioned uh, in part of his uh, parting comments there about the, uh, the wiretapping bill. Where you have a government, an administration that believes it's okay to electronically surveil U.S. citizens in their own country without any inkling that they've done anything wrong, which is what the administration wants and the Congress has now passed for this administration, we have a real problem. When you have an attorney general, for example, that says habeas corpus is no longer important, we have a real problem. And it's when those policies came to light over the last couple of years that it, uh, that it became crystal clear to me and a lot of Americans something is deeply wrong with this system. And you now believe that George W. Bush has been a greater threat to liberty than Bill Clinton? Uh, absolutely, because of the systemic assault on the Bill of Rights, it's very different. I certainly, as you know, uh, had my differences with, with uh, uh, President Clinton and was, the, was one of the impeachment managers. But the problem with the current administration and the mindset that has taken hold here in Washington, and there's really so little difference between the two major parties, you can see it you know, with your, with your uh, two guests that were just here, is the fact that the system itself and what the Bush administration has done to the system of taking liberty from the people and interposing it up here in Washington. So who's a greater threat going forward, John McCain or Barack Obama? Uh, each, each in their own way is, is very much a creature of the status quo. Even though Senator Obama talks about change, the fact of the matter is that he is very wedded if you look at his programs in terms of uh, uh, socialized medicine and, and health care. Senator, uh, Senator McCain, of course, very much in the mold of George W. Bush in terms of uh, more wiretapping and assaults on individual liberty. Both of them are very much the status quo, and that's why my campaign, uh, Bob Barr 2008, uh, and the Libertarian Party message, which is very mainstream of individual liberty, is really resonating with but people. It, but as you know, a lot of your former colleagues, including Newt Gingrich, think that a vote for you is the same thing uh, as a vote for Barack Obama, that you're going to do to John McCain exactly what Democrats think Ralph Nader did to Al Gore in 2000. Beat him. Well, it, it, it really is illustrative of the sort of Alice in Wonderland world that uh, the Newt and the Democrats and the other Republicans up here live in. Their world is completely circumscribed and defined by the two-party system, and any threat to that system uh, is to be denigrated. But uh, how much of a threat are you? Libertarians got about 400,000 votes last election. 
Uh, last election, the election before, uh, is no indication of where we are now. This is a very different, as you know well as a student of this business, is a very different cycle. When you have 85 percent of the American people in the, uh, the, the right direction, wrong track poll, that indicate they believe the country is going in the wrong direction, simply is deeply wrong. We've never seen that before. That changes the whole dynamics. Uh, the, the polling that, uh, that I've seen with regard to, to my candidacy, uh, you know, 10%, 8%, 6%. Uh, I've seen closer to three or four, but go ahead. Well, there, there, there are a number of very early polls out there, and none of, them, uh, none of them really indicate an awful lot, other than the fact that even at this early stage in our campaign, people are paying attention, and I think there is a real reservoir of support and, out and there the for change. And the Democrats believe that you will have a very specific targeted impact. I want to show what David Pluff, Barack Obama's campaign manager, said to Politico a couple weeks ago. He said that uh, you could have a special impact in Alaska and Colorado and Georgia. He said Alaska is one of the states where we think Barr can get six, seven, eight percent. Barr will get some votes in Georgia. If Barr were to get two percent in most states, our belief is he'll get four percent here, most of it coming out of McCain's hide. They think that you can tip Georgia and Alaska especially to Barack Obama. Is that what you believe? Uh, what we believe is that that indicates that there are a lot of votes out there, a lot of Americans that are not going to vote for Senator McCain. The votes that I would take uh, from sort of that side of the ideological spectrum, uh, the disenfranchised, disenchanted Republicans and conservatives, are not going to vote for Senator McCain well, what anyway. Well, why not? Because of McCain-Feingold, for example, and the big government programs, uh, the Iraq war, his support for continued occupation of Iraq, these are not policies and programs that appeal to, have ever appealed to conservatives. So, so what is your electoral strategy? Are you trying to boost up the overall number of libertarian votes, which would take you in one direction, crisscross the country, go to a lot of different states, or to have targeted impact in a couple of states like Georgia, Alaska, Colorado? We're really doing a combination, George. Uh, our campaign manager, who, who man Ross Verney, who managed uh, Ross Perot's uh, campaigns, uh, what we've done is we've put together an electoral map, uh, and we're beginning our, uh, our campaign after this uh, holiday weekend, focusing on several of the states, including those that you did mention, where the libertarian and sort of independent voters have shown greater historic strength. That's where we're going to start our focus and start, start our effort. But it will be very much a national campaign. We only have about 30 seconds left. Quickly, uh, I know you want to win. Short of winning, define success. Uh, success will come from opening up the electoral system here so that no longer after this cycle will Americans feel themselves bound to the artificial constraints of a two-party system. They'll know that there's a real choice, that there is real change. Bob Barr 2008 this year uh, and uh, somebody else next time. But we're going to open up the system. That's very important to change this. Congressman Barr, thanks very much for your time this morning. My pleasure.